Hello everyone and welcome to another iMindMap 10 tutorial. This time we'll be looking at presentation view. You can see we've already got a map we'd like to use, so we can go ahead up to the action menu or the share menu in Windows, hit present and click new presentation. This will open up a new window which allows us to start our presentation, so go ahead and name it and then you can choose from 2D or 3D view. The functionality is the same, except 3D will take us into 3D mode for our presentation, whereas 2D will keep us like this. And then we can auto-create or create your own. Uh, we'll go through creating your own presentation for now, and we'll come back to auto-create at the end. So select create your own, hit choose, and this is presentation view. You can see we get a view of our map, some slides on the left-hand side, a viewer to see what each slide can see, and a toolbar on the top. By hitting play, you can preview your presentation. But as you can see, we only have one slide right now, so when I try to progress, it just keeps taking us back to the same slide. So, let's go ahead and add some new slides. To do this, click on a branch that you'd like to turn into a slide or an image. Either's fine. I'm going to click on the one, and then click on the little plus icon underneath the existing slide in the list and it will create a slide from your selection. Once you hit play and we preview that we can see this is the view that we currently have of that slide. It's a little off at the moment and you can see with our, our viewer that it's a little too centered around the one and we don't get to see the word intention. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that around a little bit using the little four-way arrow icon there's a bounding box around the item, so you can't move the viewer too far from the original source. You can shrink the box in using the control points. And just adjust that again. And now when we preview our presentation, we get a much clearer view of the branch that we chose. Hit escape to get out of the preview. And you can also rotate your viewers just to give your, give your maps a little more of an interesting presentation um, using the little icon. Now, from here, we can start building up a presentation of the viewer moving over to different branches. Um, I've used some sort of buzzwords for the map itself. Um, so it's not giving any specific information, but it kind of represents the kind of style you might be going for when creating a presentation. You can select multiple branches by holding down Command on a Mac or Control on Windows and then clicking on more than one branch to select them both. And then when you hit the plus icon, they will both appear at the same time on that slide. You can go ahead and preview that as well. By pressing the left and right keys, you progress through your presentation. You see the icon appeared there. And now after information, we should get them both appear at once. There we go. Just like that. And you can do that for the entire map if you wanted by just command or control and clicking all of the branches and then turning them into a slide. It's entirely up to you. If images are attached to branches, just like the number one was at the beginning, uh, and this target is attached to the target branch, uh, the image will always appear with the branch, or the branch will appear with the image. And then the last slide on this main branch is problem. You can see this has a relationship attached to it. Now relationships will only become completely visible on the map when both connections have appeared. So when we make problem appear, you won't be able to receive the relationship, but when we make solutions in the second main branch appear, you'll be able to see the entire relationship. You can even go back to previous branches in new branches. So we've already been to point, but we want to go back to it before we go to problem one last time. So by clicking on the point branch, and then selecting the little plus icon between these two slides, we will revisit this branch. But of course, the branches we've already visited before that point will now be visible unless we change that in the settings, which I'll show you how to do a little bit later. To test this, 
we can right click on a slide and click start presentation from here and this allows us to preview a presentation from whichever slide you choose. You don't have to always preview it from the very start. You can even group a number of slides together so we can have this entire main branch appear at once if we prefer by shift and clicking all of the slides we want involved and hitting the group button that will bring them all into one slide so they all reveal at the same time. You can then manipulate this viewer just like you can any of the smaller ones. And by hitting play now we can see that the entire main branch and its children will appear at once. So you can create more slower paced presentations or you can go for more broad presentations. You can even ungroup branches using the ungroup button and that will split them back out into their separate branches. Um, you can see that further and also have now been separated whereas we wanted them together before so by shift and clicking on both of those and hitting group it puts them back to the way they were before they were split apart. So I'm going to go ahead and just speed this up a little bit just so you can watch the process of me going through each branch, setting up a view for them uh, and slowly building up the presentation that I want. Like I mentioned earlier, you can reveal your whole map at once if you like. Now that all these branches have already been explored in the previous slides, by simply broadening the viewer so that it includes the entire map, for this final slide in the presentation, you will get a good view of the entire map at once. Just going to make sure that fits. And there we are. So I'm just going to skim through this. You see, naturally, we tend to default to using a clockwise order with our presentations, but don't be afraid to stray from that if your presentation requires something different. You can build them in any order, um, but I've built mine in a clockwise fashion, and when I mind map 10 automatically builds one for you, it will also do it in a clockwise fashion. Now, if you want to change the speed and the tempo of your presentation, you can very quickly do that with templates. I'm going to change mine to the meeting preset for now. Hit change template in this presentation, and that will apply the changes immediately. You see the slides changed, uh, the ordering. It breaks down the information a bit differently. If we go ahead and hit play, we can see the animations are much faster and it reveals more information at once um, if a branch or a descendant of a main branch has its own descendants. Uh, we can go ahead and change that again to big overview and you can see now that the animations are slower but we're revealing a lot more information at once. So you can clearly see how templates change the flow of the presentation by altering the breakdown of information. So I just change that back to our original template. Now branding allows you to customize your presentation a little bit more with backgrounds uh, and logos. So you can see you've got some preset backgrounds in here you can use. I think they work better with 3D view personally. Uh, I like to keep 2D view blank. And for the logo you can just drag in any kind of logo that you'd like to be sitting in one of the corners of your presentation. By clicking on this little icon here you can change the position of it and then when you hit OK, you can see that will appear in the corner that you've chosen. And that will overlay on top of your presentation throughout the entire thing. So there's no additional graphics work needed. You literally just use that tool and it will be over the top. In the presentation menu, we have autocomplete, which if you've partially made it through a presentation and, you, and you're getting a little impatient, you want to just finish it, you can use one of those features to just round off the rest of your presentation. Uh, if you know it's not going to be anything too complex, that's an easy way of, of finishing it up. Um, we have kiosk mode is available from here, which is a little feature I'll get into very soon. From here you can also access the branding menu, the one we just used to put the logo in, 
and we get access to our settings. So from here, we can get access to changing a lot of the different features. You can change how many seconds you want slides to show for. That's useful for kiosk mode. Again, I'll get into that in a sec. We can choose between 2D transitions. We can change the way that the camera will traverse the map and the different kinds of animations that will play during that process. Then, like I mentioned earlier, you can choose to have everything viewable on the map at once, or you can choose to only be able to see what you're looking at at that exact moment. Uh, and you can even choose settings sort of in between that. Um, you can choose to use audio notes as well. So if you want them to play automatically, that can be really good for rehearsing presentations. If you leave yourself little audio prompts on branches and then play through your map, those notes will play back to you automatically, which can really help you out. You've got 3D environments. Uh, these are the backgrounds I would recommend for your 3D presentations. I think they work better than the 2D ones. And then we have our default view. I'm going to leave it as 2D because that's the mode we've been working in up till this point. Um, and by playing, now we can see some of the changes we just made coming into effect. So we're getting everything at once now. Uh, nothing is being revealed as it goes along. We can see the entire contents of the map. And the animations are a little bit faster. Uh, and we'll just come back out of that now. There we go. And next is kiosk mode. So by going back to the presentation menu, we're going to go into settings and turn this feature down because the seconds that a slide shows for is affected in kiosk mode. So we're going to go open that. And it'll tell you what it does. By hitting begin, kiosk mode will play through your slides at timed intervals. We set ours just now to every five seconds. So you can see that every five seconds, it will progress to the next branch. So kiosk mode is great for, again, rehearsing presentations, or just if you know exactly how long you're going to spend on a specific thing, it saves you having to manually go through each branch because kiosk mode will just take care of that for you automatically. Lastly, we're going to go back to the auto create feature. When selecting presentation view in the export menu, it will automatically build a presentation for you, one slide per branch, and then you just need to choose the transitions and the format, and you're pretty much good to go. From here, you can choose to export the PowerPoint presentation, or you can hit back and choose to export it in a different way, whether that be a video file or a PDF, it's up to you. Hope you found this tutorial useful, and I'll see you next time, guys.